Okay, um, I wanted to do something on the uh, the E series, the E hydro, the E sync reverser, um, anything with the electronic controller uh, series, John Deere tractors. Um, they all work about the same with the with the controller. And one of the one of the big things that people um, realize or don't realize is that uh, the the controller itself, the way it works. Uh, with the sensors and with the diagnostic onboard diagnostic lights it's really easy um, to troubleshoot and a lot of people don't realize that because they just don't understand what the controller does and what the what the sensors do um, and that kind of thing right so one of the things that if you have uh, 4210 like this one or um, any of the 4010 series machines or anything with the with the electronic uh, operating system from John Deere um, you're going to want to get the the service manual if you have these because if you if you have a situation where the machine won't move and and that's like the most common thing is that the um, the controller will flash a series of, of codes to the, the code light, which is this thing right here, and it will flash the, the diagnostic or, or trouble code that you need to then look up in the service manual, right? So um, the good thing is that if you look at the service manual, it has a lot of information about the controller, the codes, the sensors, um, how they work, you know why they would fail and kind of how to troubleshoot uh, fixing the, the the code when it happens so <clears throat> I've been around these machines for a long time so the the fact that it's got the controller and, and the sensors and the codes not a big deal for me but if, if you were to buy a machine like this and let's say you went to use it and it would not move that that's gonna be the most common thing you go to use the machine you press the forward pedal on the hydro um, and it just does not move. There's nothing, right? It's in gear. Uh, everything seems to be normal, but the machine just will not move. That is because um, the job of the controller is to uh, use the sensors to figure out what you're trying to do with the, with the machine. And if it can't, if it's either having a hard time with a sensor or a variable input sensor is not working right, like the foot pedals for the hydrostatic, um, it will not move and, and it's of course a safety issue because um, you know it doesn't know what you're trying to do with the machine so it's just not going to move and it's going to flash it's going to flash a series uh, of four flashes on this onboard uh, diagnostic light right here and the flashes can be short or they can be long flashes and I think the short flash is you know half a second and the long flash is, is one second something like that so so it'll go through It'll flash the four the four uh, codes to you, and it'll be long and short, combination of both, you know, in, in four in four uh, sequences, and it will tell you exactly why it cannot move because it cannot either get a signal from a sensor, or one of the variable sensors um, is out of range. Right? It doesn't know it doesn't know what to do. So th so that's kind of like your starting point with the with the electronic controller. Now the controller itself, it actually, um, it, it's underneath the steering column on the left side. So if you were to pull this panel off, you would see this wiring harness that actually plugs into the controller. And that controller uh, has about, I wanna say 10 different sensors that plug into it. And the sensors can either be, uh, I'll call them, just to make this really simple, either on off sensors, or variable voltage sensors. So if you if you think about the pedals on the on the e-hydro, well, when you press the forward pedal, it's just going to send voltage to the controller, telling that controller to then send voltage to the forward solenoid on the on the hydrostatic transmission, and and that's it. Like like there's a variable sensor on this pedal right here that has um, anywhere from 0.5 volts to roughly 4.5 volts at full throttle, right? All the way down would be 4.5 volts. And that voltage is going to the controller to tell it what to do. So when there's, you know, less than one volt, let's say uh, 0.5 volts on the pedal, 
the controller says, okay, it doesn't want to go forward. The person doesn't want to go forward, so don't move the machine forward, right? That's, that's the neutral position. So if you go and you press it halfway, that variable sensor for your, for your forward pedal is sending probably about 2, 2.5 volts over to the controller. And then the controller is telling the forward, uh, the forward solenoid to go in about, to, to open up about halfway, giving you half throttle, right? And it says that simple. So all you're doing is saying, okay, I have, you know, two volts on my forward uh, uh, variable sensor in the machine. That's telling your controller to give me half throttle forward. Same thing in the reverse, right? It's the same exact thing. These sensors, they are plugged into the, to the controller with three wires. If you've got a ground, you've got a low voltage five volts, which is powering the sensor. And then you've got a return voltage line, which is like I said, 0.5 to, to 4.5 volts typically on, on, the two, on the two pedals. And, and each pedal has its own variable, uh, you know, uh, sensor that goes back to the controller telling it telling the controller exactly what you're trying to do so that that's pretty much how this whole system works and then there's there's other sensors that are just on off sensors so there's there's variable sensors and there's on off sensors an on off sensor is oh you know the flywheel sensor the flywheel is turning the engine is running that's on right the four-wheel drive sensor the four-wheel drive is turning the four-wheel drive is on so it's telling the controller it's on or it's off so you have those two types of sensors on this machine. And when there is a problem with any of, there's about 10 of them on here. When any of them have an issue, the machine will not move typically. And you'll get a flash, four flashes on this guy over here, right? And that's how you're gonna, that's how you're gonna troubleshoot this entire controller with the 10 or so uh, onboard sensors to do any troubleshooting and diagnostics on the machine. And again, the uh, service manual will give you uh, much more detail on the high level overview of what I just gave you, but that's how it works. That's how this whole system uh, works. And this system uh, is all electronic and every sensor gets about five volts and gets a ground. And then if it's an on off sensor, there's a back feed wire that gives it five volts back as on or, or no volts is off. And then if it's a variable, um, it's going to be anywhere from like 0.5 to 4.5 volts back to the controller to tell it where it is in that variable range. Um, that's it. Like that's the entire way this works. So if you have a no move issue when you're on the machine, check the, check the code and then look the code up in the manual. I think if you Googled it, you would probably find the code chart. It's readily available. So if you don't want to buy the manual, um, then you could just Google it, and I'm, and I'm sure there's somebody out there who has the code listing that they could uh, they could help you out. I will tell you this: um, the most common codes that you'll see is going to be the codes, and you you can actually force this if you press both these pedals at the same time, both the forward and the reverse, it won't move, and it will flash the code for both the pedals are being pressed at the same time. Uh, troubleshoot code, right? Or um, trouble code. The other common one is going to be, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, there's a seat sensor on this seat. If you unplug that seat sensor or you're not sitting on the seat and you go to hit the forward pedal, machine will not move. You'll get the four blinks on the, on the, on the light and then you will get the seat sensor code, right? If you looked it up. So, so that's how you troubleshoot all this. Um, I'm going to do another video on, you know, how do you, how do you fix, how do you fix the problem once you understand what the problem is? Or how do you troubleshoot even further? The way you can troubleshoot the sensors is you can, uh, you can backfeed the connector. So you don't want to ever unplug these connectors when the machine is on because it will confuse the onboard controller and it will actually uh, introduce other issues with the controller. So I'm gonna show you how to not do that, of course, and then still uh, diagnose if you've got a bad sensor. And also I'm gonna show you how to go through the, uh, the learning sequence on the controller as well, because I've done that on, on another machine. And um, at first glance, it seems like it's gonna be uh kind of kind of difficult but it's not it's it's a very very easy so i'm going to show you two things and two more videos like i said i'm going to show you how to um 
troubleshoot a potential bad sensor and the sensor I'm going to show you is the is the rear um, variable resistor sensor and then I'm also going to show you uh, let's say the sensor turns out to be not the problem and you're suspecting the controller is the problem there is a a relearning sequence that you can go through with the controller to then relearn all the sensor um, outputs and that is something that is also in the service manual and um, people tend to be a little bit hesitant or afraid of that but honestly I wouldn't be because it's really easy and once you do it once um, you could do it a hundred times and it would be just no problem so I hope this helps you out with just a high level understanding of the e-hydro and the electronic uh, controllers that control these machines um, and like I said, I'll have two more videos going through the diagnosis of an actual controller issue and a diagnosis of a, um, what the uh, forward or the rear, the backwards motion uh, variable sensor that potentially I thought was bad, but it turned out to be something else. Okay, hope this helps you out. That's about it. Okay, um, I'm gonna cover uh, how to troubleshoot the variable reverse uh, sensor on John Deere 4210. Um, this is a continuation of the e-hydro uh, electronic controller video that I did. I wanted to show, you know, once you've got the the code for the problem, how to how to then further troubleshoot to see if your um, variable sensor is in fact bad or if it is something else. So. This is this this situation that I ran into was um, you know I try to go in reverse with the machine. It would go in reverse for about four seconds, and then the machine would stop and it wouldn't move. And I would have um, two longs and two shorts as the code. And two longs and two shorts, if you look it up in the service manual, um, is the reverse pedal uh, variable sensor. Right, that's, that's what the controller is having a problem with. And it means one of two things with that, with that sensor, either um, the ground on it is bad, uh, where, where it connects into the controller, or um, the variable sensor itself is bad and needs to be replaced. So, you know, that, that seems like it would be um, hard to figure out, but if you use this simple technique, which I'm going to show you, uh, like I mentioned in my first video, this system is really simple. You've got um, three wires to every sensor, right? And uh, sensors are either going to be variable output sensors that send variable voltage back to your controller like this one does, or they're going to be on off sensors. Um, and, and that's it. Like, so you have three wires into your sensors. Uh, one's the ground. And one is the low voltage, which is a constant five volts. That's what powers up the sensor. And then the other one is the voltage line back to the controller. So there's three wires. The line back to the controller is what we're gonna we're gonna um, backfeed. We're gonna backfeed that line uh, on this on this video, so you can tap into what that voltage actually is going back to the controller. And that's really how um, you're gonna test your variable sensor. So if you think about it, um, we're gonna, we're gonna backfeed the voltage on that line back to the controller and we're gonna say, hey, you know, is it, is it between you know, 0.5 volts and 4.5 volts? Uh, and if it is in that range, we know that our variable sensor is doing its job and is in fact working fine and it's not the issue. So I'm gonna show you that now, how I have done that quite a bit in the past and on this machine now um, to, to further troubleshoot the actual sensor once you get the code for that sensor being, uh, being shown on the onboard um, computer. So if you remember, you know, like I said, I had, the code was coming out here. It was too long and too short. That led me to the reverse uh, variable sensor, which sits underneath here. And I'm gonna show you that now. Let me get the light on here. So if we go under the machine, what I've done is 
I have set up um, a voltage meter. I set up a voltage meter. I have not unplugged anything. Uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind, I mentioned this before, is do not unplug any of the sensors while the, while the key is in the on position and the machine is off or while the machine is on, obviously. So you never want to unplug a sensor when the key is in the on position because the controller is going to get confused and you're going to have to do um, what they call an automatic learning of all the, all the sensors with the controller, which I'm going to show you that in another video. But it's just something you don't want to have to do unless you, you really have to do it because what you're really doing here is you're looking at the sensor behind the code that the controller is having a hard time with. So, so okay, so basically the way you're gonna do this, and there's a number of ways you can backfeed any, any, any plug or any harness when it comes to um, electronics, right? I don't know if you can see this, but the, what I like to do is simply take a sewing, uh, heavy sewing needle, and you can, you can take that sewing needle and you can you can put it into the wire uh, gently by just kind of breaking the insulation and just, just touching the wire inside, the copper wire inside that wire itself. Um, and you're gonna do no harm to that wire because the sewing needle is just so small and you're not gonna put it all the way through it, but you're gonna get it on there enough, I don't know if you can see that, enough where then you can put your alligator clip on the needle, which the needle is touching the wire and now you're back feeding that live wire that's still fully connected to the, um, the sensor itself. Again, you know, keep everything connected. You don't want to break connection, break voltage with the sensors and the controller because that causes other issues. So this, this back feeding of the, of the wire itself, and you could just, you could do this other ways. Um, you can stick the, uh, the alligator clip in there or the probes from the meter right in there. I don't like to do that just because it's hard. You don't know if you've got a good connection and whatnot. So this is what I do and it, and it works great. You can do this for other types of electrical um, diagnostic work when you're using a meter. So I've got the meter hooked up to there, positive on that, on that purple wire. The purple wire on this, on this, um, this sensor is the back feed wire to the controller. So this is the guy that should be between 0.5 and 4.5 volts. So if I look at my meter, and I've got the ignition on. I have, let's see. I have 0.7 volts. And again, on, on the controller, the software is going to say if it's less than one volt, it's not being pressed. And right now, the reverse pedal is not being pressed. I'm less than one volt. So I have a no move condition on the machine. And the sensor. The variable sensor so far looks like it's doing its job, right? So now if I reach up and I hit the reverse pedal with my hand, I've reached up around here and my hand's going in and actually pushing on the reverse pedal as if someone's in there. And I've got the ignition on, machine's off, machine's completely off. Don't do this with the machine on and don't do this when you're underneath it when the machine's on because it's dangerous. But machine's off, the, the ignition's in the on position. I'm gonna go ahead and start pushing down on this reverse pedal, right? And you'll see it move the meter and it goes about halfway and about two volts. That is what I'm talking about. That voltage is going back to the controller at half throttle. Let me go further and that is full throttle in reverse. Not full throttle, but full pedal pressed all the way down in reverse. And I'm about 4.8, 4.08, 4.10, let's call it volts. Again, I'm less than five, about 4.5 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and release it, and you'll see it return back to 0.7. So the way that this sensor, the calibration on it, and the controller are working right now is the controller is, is reading 0.72, less than one volt as the neutral position, and this is the full reverse uh, signal voltage back to the controller, which would open up the solenoid on the hydrostatic transmission to full full open in the reverse uh, reverse mode or position, right? Hence, putting me in the reverse direction as fast as the machine will go in this range, and and that's how this works. It's it's that simple. Like if you understand, this is the variable sensor, and this is what I'm sending back to the controller. 
this sensor is working. There, there's nothing wrong with the sensor. It's absolutely working fine and it's within range. It's less than five on the max, less than one for neutral. Um, we're good, right? So uh, this is a very simple way that you can troubleshoot your sensors on the electronic controller uh, set up on the John Deere's. Now you can do this same exact thing with the software, um, but the software is not needed. So you, you can do this yourself the way I have here, and it's absolutely gonna give you the information you need to figure out if this sensor is either good or it's bad. Okay, so now <clears throat> the conclusion we're gonna come to with this sensor is that the sensor's fine. And the code that I've, I'm getting, the two, the reverse fault code I'm getting is not because of the sensor. There's one other thing that you wanna do before, before you kind of go on to the next part of the uh, controller system, right? I have seen this, and this is definitely something is easy and you can try and see if it fixes it. Now that you know the, control, the, um, the sensor is good, it's possible that the connector that is connecting the sensor to the controller harness, right, which goes back to the controller, it is definitely possible that the connector itself has an issue with the ground. And I've seen this happen uh, once, maybe twice, right? But what can happen is the ground is not making a good contact from the controller to the sensor. And or, and or you've gotten a stick in, in, that, in that connection and the connection is not fully being made. So what you wanna do before you, you go and further diagnose anything else is you wanna turn the key off on the machine, right? Make sure the key is off. You don't wanna do this when you have power turned on because like I said, you'll introduce other issues with the controller, it's gonna confuse it. But turn the key off, which means you're gonna get no voltage here, right? And then what you're gonna do, um, you're gonna, I'll show you the plug. Plug is actually uh, right here. So I've got, I've got this being backfed to my, my, my digital uh, meter, but voltage meter. But what you're gonna do is simply um, disconnect all that. You know, I'm just doing this to show you now what you wanna try next, but disconnect all that. Turn, turn the key off first. Disconnect all your voltage meter stuff that we have connected here. And simply unplug this connection to this this um, this sensor, right? And when you unplug the sensor, you're gonna take the sensor, get some good electrical cleaner that's made for electrical connections, spray it on both the sensor and the actual harness side itself, let it dry for about 30 seconds, plug it back in, get a nice tight fit in there, uh, make sure the clip is, is fully seated on the clip and, and it's not gonna go anywhere, okay? So that is something you wanna try before you move any further to and then once you've got that all plugged back in, try and see if the machine will move now in reverse without throwing the code. Um, I've seen this where the connection has just gotten a little bit dirty or corroded and it's got a bad ground. The, the controller to the sensor has a bad ground and the controller is not sure. It's not getting the right voltage because the bad ground. This will, this will rule that out. And if it's that easy of a fix, it's worth trying this because I've seen where this does fix the problem. Um, you try the machine, you see if it's fixed, you know, operate it for a little bit and, and most likely the, the problem's gone. Now, that's the easy, easy stuff to try. I showed you both um, getting the voltage, getting the live voltage off the sensor by uh, back feeding the connection with, you know, just a simple needle. Um, and you can do that also with the, with the multimeter straight with the, with the connectors if you rather. But that's how you do it. And I've also showed you how to you know maybe unplug it and plug it clean it up plug it back in and, and see if that helps those two things you want to do that first before you go any further um, and I am gonna take a break and I'll be back in a little bit okay this is um, this is the third part on the uh, the e the e hydro issue I was having and the third part really is all about um, you've you kind of understand the electronic controller and how it works with the sensors and you also have a trouble code that you've tested the sensor and the sensor turns up to be good um, so you've, you've also tried to disconnect the sensor when the keys off and cleaned it up with some electronic cleaner and you plug it back in and there's still the same issue same code so, so this part uh, this video is going to cover <clears throat> now 
now what you're going to look at is the controller itself, right? Because what can happen on these machines is um, there's a couple things that could happen. And from past experience, I can give you, you know, what I do know is that if you have a machine that is in storage and you pull the battery, you pull the battery from the machine and you put it up on a shelf and that machine's left without a battery for um, anything longer than a couple months, right? So you, you've just completely disconnected the machine for a couple months, no battery. Um, what can happen with these controllers is that the controllers have a persistent memory, they call it, which just means that it memorizes all the settings and all the calibrations when it learned um, all the sensors, right? So it has all that sensor data and it knows what the mins, the maxes should be. That memory, believe it or not, if you take the battery out for a long time, that memory um, can get wiped out or, or disrupted. There's an onboard uh, battery, I'll call it, on the controller board itself. And, and the job of that battery is to, to give that uh, that memory, uh, be able to keep that memory of all those, all those, um, you know, uh, sensor uh, readings and to, to memorize what it should have for the mins and the maxes, right? So when you pull the battery on the machine, you're in, in essence um, letting the board kind of use its own onboard battery to, to do the memory part. Now, I've seen this happen where either the board's uh, battery is old and maybe it doesn't hold um, as long as it should and I would imagine you could you could do that uh, For a year or two on a brand new machine. You probably wouldn't have an issue But the older machine has an older board has an older onboard battery So I, my theory is that the controller memory gets disrupted or in, in, in some cases completely wiped out uh, You put the battery back in in the spring you fire up the machine and you have issues with the with the controller and sensors right out of the gate that is a that is something that I think um, is definitely possible on an older machine. So that's one that's one possible situation that you could run into with a controller issue. The other one, like I said earlier on my earlier two videos, if you unplug any of these sensors when the machine's on, right there, it's gonna it's gonna cause issues with the controller because it's gonna have to recalibrate itself, and it doesn't do that automatically. Um, and it will, it will confuse the controller and you have to actually go into the auto learn, auto calibration mode uh, to then fix it. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Both of those situations can happen in my mind. The battery one and pulling uh, the plug on the sensor while the machine's running. Both those can happen in the real world and I, I think I've kind of seen that a few times. So I want to say for sure they can happen, right? And, and both, in both those situations. You just want to go through the relearning uh, sequence for the controller's memory, and and that's all you're doing, right? You're not you're not doing anything with the software on board on the controller. You're not flashing the software, which is updating it. You're you're simply just telling the controller, uh, okay, let's start over with your memory. Go ahead and relearn everything about all your your sensors that you know about in, in on the machine. So. With that said, uh, what you're gonna do, uh, the way you run the automatic programming on, on the John Deere 4210 and probably all the other 4000, 3000 series machines is you're gonna move uh, fuse, I believe it's fuse 11 to the fuse 12 position. And if I could get my light, I can show you exactly what that looks like. So if you look at the fuse panel, um, fuse 11 is gonna be this guy right here. It's the 10 amp fuse, the red one, and you're gonna move it to one position to the right. You're gonna simply unplug it, put it to the right, okay? And then you're gonna turn the key in the on, in the on position, not starting the machine, just turning the key in the on position. So one word of caution with this is once you do this, once you move that fuse and you turn that key on, <clears throat> you can't go back. You can't, that's a point of no return. So, so if you're just tinkering with this to seeing what this does, don't do that because you're going you're gonna to tell the controller um, that you want to be in the auto programming mode. And then you can't undo that. Once you tell the controller that, it's, it's you have to go through the sequence of auto-programming the machine or else the machine will not move. The controller will not let you out of this mode. Um, so just be careful. If you're going into this mode, it's only because you've tested the sensor, the sensor's good, 
and uh, you believe that the controller um, is having an issue with its memory, right? It needs to be recalibrated, and that can happen, like I said, if you pulled the battery and left it out for a while, an older machine, or one of your sensors was unplugged, either on, you know, by accident or with a stick getting in there, or you physically unplugged it while it was running. Those are the only two times that you really want to go into this uh, reprogramming mode by taking that fuse and putting it on the right uh, right slot and then turning that key on. But that's what you do. You take, the, you take the fuse out, put it to the right, and you turn the key on. And when you do that, you'll see uh, you'll see the diagnostic light over here. It'll it'll glow. It'll stay on. It won't shut off. Typically, when you start the machine, that comes on and goes off, and that means everything's well. Um, when you go into diagnostic or, or relearning mode with that fuse and the key, this stays on. It'll glow and it'll stay on. Once you do that, you come back. Once it's on, you come back over to your fuse panel and put that fuse you know, back into. Put it back into the original position, which is this guy here. So you know, turn the key, diagnostic light is on, stays on. You take the fuse out, put it back into the regular spot. Um, that's how you get into your controller's uh, relearning, uh, recalibration mode, right? And once you get into that mode, then that's that's when you have to do certain steps to get the controller to learn all the sensors, you know, as if they were learning for the first, it was learning for the first time. So I'm gonna close this. And now, I'm gonna move the light out of the way. I am gonna show you what you need to do. So what I did, um, I have, I have the manual, the shop manual, so I, I didn't want to show that on the video. So I basically, um, I'm gonna close this door because the audio is kind of weird. So basically what I did was I wrote down uh, the steps of what you need to do when you get into this relearn mode. And it's not hard and it's something that you definitely can do. And like I said, you do it once, you can do it a hundred times. This is this is where people kind of get a little bit of afraid to, to do this, but <clears throat> don't be afraid. It's, it's really not that bad. So when you're in diagnostic mode, um, that's when you're going to start doing all these things, right? There's, there's four different things you have to do, and you have to hold these, these things in a certain position for about five seconds, and then the controller learns um, what the ranges should be on the variable um, sensors and on the on-off sensors. So <clears throat> before we go too far on this, I'm going to take another pause, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so before we go any further with this, I want to mention the way I did this was I put the machine up on jack stands because part of this uh, re relearning sequence of events is you have to run the machine at full throttle, right? And you're messing around with, you know, pressing the hydro forward and reverse pedals while at full throttle in gear in range to tell the to help the controller learn what it needs to do so with that with all that being said obviously you don't want to do this uh with the wheels touching the ground you want to get the wheels off the ground and what i did was i took it even further i said well i'm gonna i'm gonna put jack stands underneath the machine i'm gonna take the wheels off so i had all the wheels off the machine i had it up on four jack stands and you know that that was how i did it and obviously that's how i would recommend you do it but Again, <clears throat> if you've got a backhoe on yours and you've got a, you know, the bucket with a loader, you could do this outside and use the machine itself to bring the wheels off the ground and you would be you know, obviously pretty safe to do that. Do it you know, in, a, in an area where it's a wide open space like in a backyard or a pasture or field. So <clears throat> I didn't do that. I actually took the wheels off and put the machine on jack stands just to be super safe. But this is what you're gonna do when you get into this relearning sequence. You're gonna hit the forward pedal and you're gonna hit the reverse pedal second and then you're gonna get into the throttle third and then you're also gonna get into um, the, the wide open forward. Okay, so let me start this back a little bit. So you're gonna hit the forward pedal, reverse pedal, run the throttle at min, run the throttle at max and then you're also gonna leave the throttle at max, okay? 
and then you're gonna get back into the forward and reverse pedal. So that's that's the part where, um, you know, the throttle being at full throttle and you're actually using the forward pedal and the reverse pedal to help the controller learn uh, what voltage results in motion of the wheels, if that makes any sense. But the way the controller thinks is, um, you know, it's, it's gonna learn what the min voltage and the max voltage is to then be able to say, uh, you know, what is the low and fastest speed movement, either forward and reverse. So <clears throat> that's what you do. Um, so this all assumes, I'm not gonna do this now because this, this would be loud with the machine on, but I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do. Uh, if you can imagine the machine is is on, okay? And you, you first have this light still glowing. You've done the fuse, you pulled the fuse, you moved it, you got that light to glow and you put the fuse back into the original location. The machine is on, I have it up on jack stands. You don't have to do that, of course. Uh, it's up to you. And the first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna flash the code for the forward variable sensor. And the code for the forward variable sensor is one short, one long, followed by two shorts. So it's one short, one long, followed by two shorts. And it will flash that sequence until it completely learns the min and the max of the foot, the forward foot pedal. Uh, variable sensor. So it wants you to leave it in neutral for five seconds, which by default, it's going to be in neutral all the way up for five seconds. And then you're simply going to press it down all the way, all the way for five seconds. And it's going to sense that you've sent the most volt voltage because it's going to read the most voltage that you can send to it. And you've, you're sending it for five seconds. It's done. It's learned the, the variable voltage for the forward pedal. You do the same thing for the reverse pedal. The, the computer will then start to flash the reverse pedal uh, code, two longs and then two followed by two shorts. And it'll just keep doing that until you uh, do the same thing with the reverse pedal. It's gonna want you to keep it in neutral. By default, you're gonna do that because you're not touching it. And then you're gonna put it all the way down and you're gonna tell it the voltage that it should expect when you're all the way down in reverse. Once it does that, after five seconds, it'll flash the next part of the, of the, of the reset process. It'll go onto the throttle. The, th the throttle position sensor is three shorts and one long. It'll do that until you um, get past the throttle learning part. And when you do that, you're gonna keep the throttle at low speed, which is, all the way down, right? All the way down towards that turtle, right? And that's gonna give you about a thousand RPMs. And then you're gonna to have to bring it all the way up. This is where uh, you don't wanna do this for obvious reasons in a garage like this with the wheels on, uh, even off the ground, because if the machine ever went on the ground, you would have an issue, obviously. So you wanna make sure you take the wheels off and you put jack stands if you're doing this in a garage or you do this outside and you use the backhoe if you've got one to put the back end up off the ground and the loader uh, in the front to get the front wheels off the ground. You're now in full throttle, and at full throttle, you should be about 2,900 RPMs. Uh, you'll see it go to about the, the last knots just before 3,000 RPMs, and it's gotta be about 2,900 RPMs because the controller, the controller needs it to be in that range for it to do, uh, to get past this throttle part of the test, of the relearning tests. So you're gonna do that, hold it at full throttle, and then if, if the controller is happy, which it will be after five seconds of being at full throttle, it'll start to flash the next part of the, the process, which is um, you gotta now tell the, tell the controller at full throttle, uh, what is the point when the wheels start to move? So what this tells the controller is when you, when you wanna move, the minimal voltage that it needs to be at in order to move this machine. That's kind of what you're telling this controller to learn. And for this part of it, you want to put the range, put the range in A, right? So you're going to put that in A, which is the lowest, slowest setting. You're going to be at, you know, in that range. And then you're going to put that throttle all the way, which is already going to be there because the previous uh, step you went through. And then you are going to uh, put this forward pedal all the way down and you are going to hold it there and you're going to watch you're going to watch the wheel or the hub if you're taking the wheel off 
for any movement forward, and it's the creeping of the hub or the wheel that you're looking for. As soon as that wheel or the hub creeps forward, you're not looking for full motion. Take your foot off that, and, and that's it. You just, you just gave the controller enough information to know what voltage it needs to send your solenoids on the transmission to just start moving your machine, right? So you do the same thing in reverse. Put it all the way down, and you're going to hold it there. And you're going to watch the wheel and you're going to watch the hub and you're going to look for movement creeping not full movement and as soon as it creeps take it off and and the controller now has learned the same thing for reverse and that's it like it, that you're done you just totally reprogrammed um what you need f uh, for the controller to do its job and your light over here will go off it should go back into the off position like normal and that's it, you are done. And if you can get through that, which you should be able to really easily, um, you, have just, you have just taken the control, onboard controller through the learning process again, and you kind of done the reset on the controller. Now, that should fix your issue. And if you, if you then take the machine and you go in reverse with it, like we had the troubleshoot code for reverse, if you go in reverse with it and it still doesn't work, there's other things you can do, but that really should, uh, should fix it. But let's say for some reason, you know, that did not work. Um, what I would do is I would try to go through that process just one more time and see if that works. If that still doesn't work, then um, really what you're looking at now is most likely an issue with the controller itself, whether it's it's a bad controller or it needs to be, um, you know, unplugged and replugged in at the controller. That's something that you'll want to, you'll want to try next. So what, what I would do next is if you've gone through this and the sensor's not bad, you've reprogrammed the controller to, you told it to relearn, you know, all the sensors and it's still not fixing it. What I would do is take the, if you look at the controller, which would be underneath here, you, there's a harness that goes into that, like I said, for the 10 sensors or so to turn the machine off, unplug the, the harness for the controller itself, clean that out with some electronic cleaners, and then plug it back in, and then uh, see if that fixes your issue. You may have to try the relearn process one more time just to, to see if that also fixes it, if it still doesn't. And then only then, let's say it's still not working, you still have a trouble code and the machine won't move. Um, it's most likely the controller at that point, and uh, I'm not gonna cover, you know, replacing a controller, but um, from what I understand, it's not really that bad. You would you would probably just replace the controller and you would have to go through the relearning sequence and then that would be pretty much it. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's pretty much what you'd be looking at. And obviously the big, the big um, problem with, not problem, but the big gotcha with the controller replacement is that the controller is gonna be expensive. It's not gonna be, it's not going to be cheap. You're not going to buy a used one because you don't want to get into the same situation. So, um, not the end of the, not it's not the it's not a showstopper showstopper, but it's going to cost you a little bit, and um, you're going to have to probably bring it. You could bring it to the dealer, which would be probably your best bet at that point because they'll they'll put a new controller in for you and make sure everything's okay. Or you could try it yourself. It's it's really up to you. Okay, I hope that helps you out with uh, controller issues on any of the electronic controllers on the John Deere's. Again, don't be afraid to do a lot of these things. Um, and you really wanna get the, the, the service manual before you get into any repair on the controllers. They are simple um, if, you, if you know how they work and you can diagnose any, any of the sensors that you need to with the, the back probing or with the digital multimeter just to get the voltage out of it. And then you can, you can figure out if the sensor is indeed bad. Um, showed you how to go through the, the relearning of the controller to the sensors, the process and the sequence you have to follow. I've done that, it's not hard, so that's not a problem. Um, and like I said, if your controller still seems to be not doing what it's supposed to, uh, it's probably a bad controller, um, so you have to replace it. All right, I hope this helps, uh, and that's about it.